Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. And if you like this watch, you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. In 2013, Jajar LeCoultre dropped the latest and possibly greatest version of the Duomet family in the Jajar LeCoultre Duomet Unique Travel Time. Initially a 100-piece limited edition dedicated to the Place Vendôme locations, the Paris boutiques for Jajar LeCoultre, and this is that watch, 100 pieces in white gold. It's the traditional 42mm Duomet case, but it has the later domed rather than conical profiled bezel. Lug to lug, it's still a wearable watch. Despite being a 42 dress watch, it's a 50.4 from lug to lug, so we'll wear on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. I own this case shape in the chronograph variant, and I can attest to its comfort and security on the wrist, including a smaller wrist. Now, it's 13.8 millimeters thick, but that domed bezel does help it to slide underneath a dress cuff. In terms of the spacing between the lugs, you'll find it's 21 millimeters. You'll have a bevy of JLC. OEM as well as aftermarket options. Now the timepiece does feature a very substantial strap. It is a black semi-gloss large rectangular scale alligator leather. The Duomets all receive some of the best straps that JLC specifies. Folded edge monotone stitch, calfskin on the underside. It features the third generation Jajero LeCoultre deployant clasp. So many of the dual met models these days do feature pin buckles to pair price and make them more competitive on the market. Uh, this is a cost no object watch, however, and the clasp itself is a double deployant, not a pin buckle, gray gold, just like the case. And that does, that does merit some elaboration. Gray gold is a white gold alloy. It's 18 karat, but it's homogenous all the way through. Gray gold is the industry term for a straight through white gold, which is to say if you scratch it, you scuff it, you dent it, there's just more white metal underneath. It never needs to be rhodium plated like a conventional white gold does. You'll also note that not only does JLC use its own gray gold, but it makes its own cases, and this one is sensational. The standout feature of every Duomet case is the system of soldered or welded lugs. Many watches, Longa included, feature the same stepped lug profile that's double finished polished on the lug profile and then satin on the case. But on Longa, most of those are actually fixed by screws, which is to say the case and the lugs are separate pieces. Here, they are physically welded on and then hand finished to remove all evidence of the soldered joint. It is absolutely gorgeous, making the case itself an act of handcrafted virtuosity. Now there is a combination of satin finish and polish to break up the mass of metal. This is not a small watch, but I do implore you to take note of the small details. JLC sweats them. Polished relieved JL logo with a media blasted interior to the crown. A polished rim and you'll note a double knurling with two different striation patterns and depth to make the crown a wonderful experience to wind in both directions, and it does wind in both directions. You'll even note satin finish on the top as well as on the bottom of the GMT adjuster pushers, but polished on their outer face. Absolutely sensational stuff. Now we can give ourselves a bit more light and talk about this watch, which might be the most practical of the dual met timepieces. You're looking at a dual time travel watch on steroids that utilizes everything from dual power reserve displays to a global AM PM indicator with a GMT spec and you adjust it using these pushers. A jump hour with an independently settable minute hand and, and not to quarters, not to tens of minutes, but to the minute. Literally any conceivable local time offset from GMT can be reproduced on this watch. So I believe including North Korea, there are now 41 hypothetical zones on the globe. And if you do happen to be flying into or out of Pyongyang, by the way, out of Pyongyang, lucky you, you can set the watch precisely. The timepiece features a crown that is used for first independently setting that second time zone. And you can see when I say you can set it to the minute, I'm not exaggerating. Most GMT watches can be stepped in one hour increments. Some exceptional travel watches like those from Vacheron Constantin and the Senator Cosmopolite from Glossut Original can be set to quarters. This is true to the minute setting and you'll note it is a jump hour. This was JLC's first and you actually 
advance the jump hour like so. This was JLC's first jump hour wristwatch. And you can see that because this is the JLC Paris Boutique Limited Edition, and JLC has both number seven and number nine on Place Vendôme, you have these red numerals for the seven and for the nine. The rest is utterly orthodox black on white printing, but it's a colorful and thoughtful tribute to one of the manufacturer's flagship boutiques. We're gonna bring things all the way back around. You could see that at six o'clock, this is not quite the world time that some make it out to be. People claim this is a world time display. It's really not. The GMT offset, since I'm on the east coast of New York or of the United States, you can actually see it's aligned with the index, that little Blue triangle is the index you can see um, at New York's GMT minus five, and that's actually adjusted forward and backwards using the pushers on the case flank. And you'll see that there is a semicircle arrangement that will shade night and day, and that's what actually moves as time progresses. It's not a conventional world time where either the ring itself or the globe moves. Now I'm going to adjust everything back so that we're looking at the same time. Okay, and now for example, I'm going to leave it on that colorful number nine. Now let's say I want to move everything in sync. I actually pull the crown out. Not only does it hack, but it zero resets the seconds. And I can move everything in sync by doing so. I'm going to go back to adjusting, and I'm going to bring midday about. Okay, so now I'm right at midday. One o'clock, one ten. Now let's say I want to travel. It might be one ten in my home time, but if I want to change my home time, let's say I want to go to London and make that my new base of operations. I'm going to go to GMT, and now the watch does all the math for me. Basically, what you want to do is you want to first set your, your local time on the dial at 3 o'clock, and then you want to set your reference time. And if you want to know what the GMT offset is for your particular city, JLC gives you help. And if you turn the watch over, you can see that this is the caliber 383, 54 joules, 498 pieces, and surrounded by a cheat sheet, as you'll find many global cities, including some with incremental non-hour offsets, perfectly inscribed on the case back. You'll also note this is a limited series of 100, individually numbered, and the movement itself unique in several respects. First, short of some of the grand complications like the Duomet Sphero Tourbillon, this is the most complex standard Duomet movement. With the 498 parts and the 54 joules, there's a lot going on. And like the other dual met, it does feature two separate powertrains which you wind with the same crown, one ratchets, one winds, and then two separate going trains that intersect at one escapement, the escapement essentially acting as the traffic cop, switching power between the two. One of them operates the balance to maintain its amplitude so there's no loss of amplitude or chronometric precision in spite of the huge mass of complications being driven on the dial side. Now, the thing about this particular Duomet caliber is that it does run at 28,800 vibrations per hour, so it is the only of the Duomet calibers that runs at 4 hertz rather than 21.6 or 3 hertz. So that's a feather in its cap. Free sprung balance, a very sturdy movement. It's thick, it's chunky, and that works to its advantage in terms of durability, but also in terms of visibility. It features the same kind of Maishore or German silver bridge and plate material, nickel, copper, zinc. It's like a longa movement, both in aesthetic and in material. There's a Cote de Soleil radiant pattern that splays out from the balance across all of the bridges, perfectly aligned from part to part. There's a even and tight perlage engine turning on the base plate. You will note both black polished screws and heat blued kiln fired screws on this watch. We'll get a little bit closer so you can see to better advantage. You have both of the screws. The polished screws generally are used for adjustment of the mechanism. The blued screws are used for physical assembly to lock things in place. And you'll also note at center there is a hammer that falls on the heart cam on the center wheel to zero reset the seconds. So you get some of the action that you would have had on the chronograph via the reset system at center. And of course, 
The watch is an absolute gem. If I turn it flush to the camera, you can see the mirrored anglage on the edge of every bridge, as well as all of the jewel sinks. This is as good as it gets. In terms of JLC finish, you can pay more for a watch, but you can't get a better finished caliber. And as discussed, short of going for a grand complication, you can't get a more complicated or capable duomet. See this one and make it yours on our website.